Welcome back to Soccer Card United. It's episode 213 of the greatest soccer card podcast in the world. My name is Jason. That's Enzo. Hi, Enzo. Hey, Jason. Um, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, the weather in Dublin is, is getting better, so that helps, of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. Feels like a quiet week in the hobby for me. I don't know if you have uh, put together a blockbuster uh, show itinerary, but I feel like, I, I don't know, I feel like my head was in the sand this week. Uh. Yeah, there's a few few kind of bits of um, mostly kind of like industry stuff. Obviously, there's a couple of uh, Ireland cards popping up from Finest that people oh, yeah. have been sending. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been uh, flagging those. Um, it's very difficult. I'm in a very difficult situation here. Um, oh, yeah. With the Ireland Finest, uh, especially the Super Factors, because I've done this podcast for so long and I know that cards often are sold at their record sale price uh, immediately after their release. And when you go looking for them. And when you go looking for them, yeah. So it's it's not like, as I've been collecting Ireland cards um, in a completely kind of like, well, not, not really recently, but I started kind of collecting them in like a passive kind of way. Like I'd be at a card show or I'd be kind of idly on eBay and I'd come across it. And mm. it was a much different way to collect than hunting stuff you know yeah there's definitely more there's more irish people in the hobby now there's more attention on it yeah um, a lot of people listen to this podcast they know you're hunting it so they're hunting it as well for that yeah. reason so it's tough yeah. there's a couple of auctions going on right now i'm not going to specify the details um <laughs> but one started at 99 cent which was mm-hmm. or, yeah and Let's the other see. one started at a very high auction price how do you feel about auction how do you feel about auctions that start at a high price? I personally don't like that. I'm like, just put a buy it now. Yeah, I don't think people have a lot of success with it. I think they're obviously, they don't want to let go for less than a certain value, but they also, I don't, I've never really seen them have too much success, I would say. No, it never, it's always, it's the worst way to sell things. Yeah, but there you go. Either like, like drop out of reserve. And, put it to 99 and out of reserve. That's the best they thing. Don't, they don't want to pay the, the, the 20 cent or whatever it is to yeah, add reserve. Yeah, that's, you're wasting everyone else's time. Yeah, so completely. People do dislike reserves, but that's their own business. I think start it low and let it go or put a reserve or put yeah, it really, and make an if offer. If you really just want to get liquid out of it so you send it to an auction, but you also have a minimum that you refuse to sell it below, add a reserve. That's what reserve is for. That's what it's for. That's literally that's literally what a reserve is for. Yeah, so not for me. Not for me, Jimmy. And also, another thing is um, you generally don't get to sell quickly and sell high. Yeah, yeah, it's one or the other. It's one or Unless the other. Unless you're very fast. And like normally auctions... Just after release is where you'll actually get that high price, but yeah. only when you start it low, get all the eyes in, get all the interest in, whatever. But um, listen, good luck to them. That's what I say. Best of luck. Best of luck to everyone um, selling. And look, the best looking Ireland cards out of the whole set are the are the ninety nines and the uh, yeah, hundred twenty fives. So are those the, the green, pros. the green, yeah, the green and the green um, diamond or speckle or something. Yeah, green diamond or speckle or something like that. Yeah. Um, we're starting off interestingly in the world of Futera. Okay. Um, because there was an announcement from Futera today, um, regarding a new club that they had acquired the rights to, and that club is Tottenham Hotspur. Hey. So, um, Futera has been appointed an official licensee of Tottenham Hotspur. Stay tuned for news about Spurs football cards launching very soon. Yeah, fair play to Futera for getting uh, licenses. Yep. You know, that's how you do it. If you're an underdog to Panini and Tops, that's what you do. You get some licenses, you work with it, you do your magic with that. I I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I couldn't actually find, um, I couldn't find a, like a press release or an announcement or anything from Futera, but luckily uh, the people at uh, Football Cartophilic seem to have found one. So this is what I have here. Uh, Futera is pleased to announce an appointment as an official licensee at Tottenham Hotspur, one of the most iconic football clubs in the world. And then the quote is, we're delighted to unveil Futera's licensing agreement with Tottenham, a football powerhouse with a rich history and a massive global fan base. That's a quote from uh, Gwyneth Glaskodine, CEO of Futera. The multi-year license arrangement with the club will pave the way for Futera to produce some very special limited edition cards for Spurs fans and collectors alike, including Futera's signature 23 karat gold plated frame cards, not to mention another level of innovation for football trading cards releasing later this year. Ooh. Oh. Something new from the Futera, uh, the boffins at Futera. Yeah, I like uh, that. Yeah, stay tuned to Futera's social channels for news about Tottenham cards launching very soon. Okay, so, I like it. Yeah. Um, and then I went on to Futera's website just to show uh, 
Tottenham fans what you might be able to get involved in to get involved in uh, but every time I click on any of the, the licensees um, it, it says they don't have any products because they do it release by release but that's good like to be honest you'd rather your club get bought up by Futera potentially than get bought up by Panini or Tops who obviously have much bigger print run sets in general yeah and, um, but then in fairness they also make shorter print too at least Tops do they have their Chrome sets etc etc but I don't know I, I can't speak to it because my club has not been taken by mm. a license yet uh, by any of the big ones. So, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just have to wait. I just have to wait, Jason. Fair enough. Um, I'm just trying to look here. On Jason, just, say, yeah. if you were in charge of it all, if you were at the helm mm-hmm. of purchasing licenses, would you go for club teams or national teams? Good question. Very good question. Um, I think I would go for national teams. Mm, interesting. I think. Yeah, you'd assume there's a more of a global crossover with in, with t- clubs. You know, like clubs. Yeah, in... but the problem is with clubs is like you're you're. It's a, people have very very different priorities when they're collecting clubs. Yeah, you say it's easier to collect your your national team. Is that what you would say? Yeah, like I mean, even like I remember like the the finest release just came out. Uh, Scotland aren't in it, even though they qualify for the Euros. It was a road two set, so whatever. Um, but uh, if they had, like, you know, I feel like a company like Futera could put together an official Scottish trading card release, Scottish FA, and have, you know, legends, have on-card autographs, have all that sort of stuff. Because obviously international teams, they are gathering uh, every three or four months um, at, at camps that they can do kind of media engagements and licensing bits. And stuff like Andy Robertson did a thing up at Hampden Park with Tops um, the yep. other day. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I don't know. I think it'd be a tough one. I, I don't think anyone's really tried the uh, the national team. I mean, we Panini have the England license. Yeah, Tops Argentina. Argentina license. Yeah, true. true, 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 true. Unique Germany. Stuff that, I suppose. The DFB yeah. have licensed Panini. Yeah, I was just thinking, because like, one of the issues I have collecting some Milan players is this, like, especially current players, is this kind of feeling of, like, are they going to leave? I don't want to have yeah. all this high end Milan stuff and the player gets transferred out. Whereas for a national team, that's not going to happen necessarily. Like, Unless they're know, Declan Rice. Yeah, they could disgrace themselves that they could be Declan yeah. Rice. Um, but in general, it's a bit more almost safer to collect. Yeah. There you um, go. Just thought you had. Just thought you had. True. And also, I think you're, you're more likely to have a rookie card for your club first. So you can take a lot of that kind of hot speculation money out of the market. True. Um, and just go and go and collect. Um, yeah, I don't know. There you go. Mm. Uh, speaking of licenses, uh, Rich Mueller story alert. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Uh, Tops and Formula One have renewed their exclusive trading card deal. Um, so you may have seen this. It was announced a couple of days ago. Formula One has announced its multi-year renewal with uh, of its trading card and sticker partnership with Tops. The move means that Fanatics own Tops will continue as the official licensee for the popular global racing series. They first acquired the rights in 2020. They continue to produce trading cards and stickers from uh, F1, F2, and F3. As part of the deal, Tops will attend multiple Grand Prix events across the 2024 FIA Formula One World Championship, beginning with the Austrian Grand Prix in late June. F1 says exclusive cards will be offered on site. And here's Emily Prazer, Chief Commercial Officer of F1. As we continue to attract new and diverse audiences to F1, having creative partners like Tops is hugely important to us. I'm delighted to continue our partnership. And uh, Kelvin Smith, the Senior Vice President of Global Licensing and Partner Development at Fanatics Collectibles, said um, that they look forward to the opportunity to further elevate the collecting journey, creating special products and programs uh, that build a lifetime of memories. There's no word in the specific length of the deal, according to Rich Mueller. Wow, could be any length of time. That could how be do you, how do you how do you view the um the looking back now on, on what we now realize was a kind of three the first three years of the of the relationship between Tops and Formula One? Do you think it's been a uh, is the brand uh, as a card brand is it more secure now than it was when it started? Uh, technically, it's four years, right? So we're into the fourth year of releases, technically. Um, but it's three years of product. Uh, well, there's, there's been no four products. 2020, 21, 22. I can't count. Go ahead. 
<laughs> so yeah, there were four four years deep, Jason. The the twenty three off there. Um, obviously they released an iconic set in twenty twenty. Uh, three sets: Sapphire, Chrome, uh, Dynasty, which all went incredibly well. Some mm. of the high end one ones of that those sets breaking all sorts of records. Obviously they set the records themselves in many in many worlds. But yeah, that that's looked back as an iconic set. Um, I think collecting F one is very much at the forefront of the growing smart part of the hobby. I think. There's obviously challenges with the sport in terms of not a lot of rookies, not a lot of driver movement, stuff like that. But overall, I don't think anyone's really complaining. I've heard a lot of people kind of talk about that they'd like the idea of maybe Panini acquiring that license, trying to get one back on Fanatics. Obviously, that hasn't happened. They've secured it up. I would say successful. Obviously, like year one was so successful that year two kind of like killed the momentum of it. They yeah. rebuilt that in year year three. Year four, I think they're doing an okay job. I think Chrome, you know, folding flagship, folding light into Chrome made Chrome a bit of a difficult set in terms of um, secondary market value. But they kept the printing on tight with Sapphire. It's done okay. They released a high. Dynasty seemed to have a lot of interest on it. There is talk of more releases coming this year. Obviously, we had Echelenza as a European release. I think that F1 has benefited a lot from the partnership with Tops, And I think, obviously, Tops have, have done the same. They've got their yeah. money's worth out of the F1 license, I would assume. I think it's good. Yeah. I, I think it's. I think it started. Um, it's like it's gone really well. Obviously, there was a, a huge amount of hype with the first year set, and I think, um, the F one hobby has been inter- interesting because it's kind of grown, um, as its own thing. I would say it's a very. I feel like the F one hobby crowd are extremely independent. Like they're not like, yeah. you know. I feel like we, we were like this for a long time in soccer as well, where we kind of were doing our own thing and we were kind of having parallel a parallel experience to the rest of the hobby. And now I think soccer is kind of gone Folding a bit in house and, you know, it's just kind of another sport. I do think F1 is, has maintained as a collector base and as a, as a hobby is kind of, yeah, community, a bit of independence. They don't feel like they, they don't pay too much attention to what goes on in the rest of the hobby and the rest of the hobby doesn't pay too much attention to what goes on there. Yeah. I think I like it. I think it's obviously, it's, you know, I would say soccer and Formula One are the two things we've paid the most attention to. Yeah. So it's kind of close to home. Obviously, that's a very European thing as well. Very, you know, this side of the world. It's obviously a global sport. But yeah, I think um, I think I'd agree with that. They've been following their own little path. I think obviously the highs of 2020 then impacted the whole kind of market of F1. But I do think ultimately um, people in it are happy collecting it and they're enjoying the sets that are coming out. I don't think people will be sad about more tops Formula One. Hmm. I mean, it's, like you were saying about the drivers and the kind of lack of driver movements and the, the lack of rookies and things like that. I think the priorities among F1 collectors is, is slightly different than, and they're not kind of like, it's occasionally when I kind of drop into, you know, an F1 break or an F1, you know, F1 card podcast or something and listen to it. It's a nice, um, it's a nice pace. It's not they're like, enjoying it. like a good time. yeah, they're enjoying it. Whereas I feel like sometimes in soccer now we've kind of become, uh, much more focused on what the other sports focus on. Who's the rookies? What's the story? This set's no good. You know that set's whatever. Um. So yeah, I think uh, long may it continue. Yeah, I think it's good. I think they did a good job with the sets this year. You know, yeah. Obviously, the I think if they had a release the pricing a little bit lower, I think it would have been a huge success. Um. But sure. that's the only fault I would have for them. And I think that's something that you'd look at most sets, whether it's NFL, NBA, etc. People kind of have that feeling across the board. So that's just where we're at in the hobby, Jason. Um, they talked about in that statement, they talked about um, experiences and visiting the, the GPs and stuff. And one thing we saw uh, today, which had been mentioned on a previous post, I think from Tops and then hadn't kind of come to fruition, but it was announced on the on social media. Um from Tops UK. Here's your chance to join us for an exclusive event to celebrate all things Tops and F1 held at the Silverstone Museum. This free event will feature a mystery guest, box breaks, breaking news, product announcements, and much more. Wow. Interesting stuff. So they're doing an event at Silverstone. Um, I want to sign up. Exclusive tickets. Oh, there's only 10. Only 10 tickets. Now, entry. The Silverstone Museum. Ten exclusive tickets. Wait, is this entire post about just 10 tickets? Hmm. No. What do you mean? Like, this event, there'll be more than 10 people at the event, I mean. There'll be 20 people at the event because you, it's 10 tickets and then... Jesus. Yeah. So, well, at least if one of us get it, we can bring the other. True. True. Although um, we have to fly to England. Yeah. 
So you get free entry for you and one guest, free access to the service and museum, free use of race simulators, free use of silver and model scale electrics, um, free entry into live box breaks with guest breakers. Right. G -g 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 guest b -b 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 breakers. Uh, buffet food and two drinks and a free Topps goodie bag to take home. Hmm. I don't know. I'm upset now to hear it's only 10 tickets. Well, I'd like to go. Look at that. Which Topps F1 products have you purchased? They want to know. Oh, it's a, lot, it's a lot of them. Can we fill this out? Uh, we can fill it out off the air. Okay, I want to go. Um, but yeah, who do you think the mystery uh, guest is? Jose Mourinho. I don't think that. That's a joke. It's a joke. I, I don't know. Jensen Button or something. Yeah. Surely it's one of their legend signees. Surely it's David oh, Coulthard. Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. Yeah, it's definitely David Coulthard. It's almost definitely David Coulthard. Yeah, you're not getting Roger yeah. Mansell's not coming. <laughs> no, like, David Coulthard, is he the only one that had on-card autographs in Dynasty? Um, I don't know, was he? You haven't a clue. Look at you. I haven't a clue. Look at you, Jason. Sorry, I'm not um, opening loads of Dynasty. Yeah, but that will tell you who they can get their hands on. Do you know, this is the... I don't see any David Coulthard autographs. No, no. Don't be stupid. I don't see any of them. Um, what's the other fella? Nigel Mansell? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mansell. They have Mansell on card autographs in Dynasty, so it could be him. I just don't... I don't think you're getting... Uh, I'd be very impressed if it's Nigel Mansell. Do you reckon? Yeah, because David well, like, Coulthard he... isn't fit to zip my Nigel Mansell's race suit like yeah but what I'm saying is if they've managed to get Nigel Mansell to sign on card autographs I'd assume they have a better legend partnership with him maybe maybe he might maybe. be gettable that's all I'm saying listen there's only one way to find out we should apply Jason we should apply yeah okay um, I mean I hope I don't, I, if I end up going and then it's David Coulthard and he heard this podcast he's not going to be too pleased with me that's true. You've said some things that cannot be unsaid or edited out because that will require a lot of time. Yeah, unfortunately, I've, I don't know how to <laughs> work the editing machine. Maybe we'll pull the pod if we get if we get to go pull the podcast. That's what I say. Right, and it's David. As soon as David Coulthard walks in, yeah, you pull it. You just unpublish. Take that unpublish. Episode two thirteen. Get rid of it. Get rid of yeah. it quick. Lost the vault. There you go. Um, we talked about last week. Uh, there was some stories coming out about you know consolidation fanatics collectors SGC PSA fanatics live Eric white, back. Of, Eric white back all this stuff going on um and then the two kind of behemoths that are building one collectors and two uh, fanatics announced that they w would not be staying apart too long because fanatics and um PSA are offering a joint uh, offering of uh, of collectors club uh, credit for people who are in the PSA collectors club. You're going to get credit towards Fanatics Live, um, and I'm sure you'll eventually be able to go Fanatics Live breaks straight to PSA. You'd imagine, maybe so, maybe so. Well. Um, they said here Fanatics Live is in collectors club with free credit for all members at both tiers. Are you in the collectors oh, club, Enzo? I am. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna have Fanatics Live free credit. I'm delighted. I might Incredible. buy into a sports card nonsense break. With yeah. Them. Premium members ready to rip. Standard members live on March 29th. You're premium I or might, standard member? I, I might be standard. I might be standard. Oh, I won't lie. Disappointing. I'll, I'll check. No, I'll have to check. I'll be very very sad now if I. My God. My account. Let me see. I feel like I needed just the basic level of collector's club. I, I feel right. a fool. Yeah. You didn't realize that you'd be getting, although it's available to members at both levels, they say in this Instagram. Yeah, but that's where the $60 is coming from. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. That's both levels. They're saying, look, you're not getting looked after too much if you're not. God, that's Lord. The, my, my member is standard, yeah. I'm, stand, I'm standard. It expires in 153 days. I better be careful of that. Now, I believe they already have this uh, active with Loop, the live selling platform Loop. I don't even know where to like investigate my benefits. Unlock the benefits, PSA Vault, no. I don't know. I don't know where to find these benefits, but apparently I have them. Yeah, free cards, magazine drops, grading specials for all. I get the magazines. The magazines do get shipped to me. Now I understand why. It's all you, you didn't know why they were sending you PSA. Oh, no, I had no idea. And I got a parallel magazine and everything, Michael Jordan or something like that. I don't know what I was getting. Right. So this is why. 
these are signing bonuses. So I don't know if you're going to get this because I think it's for new customers. Right. They've already got me. Now, I'm not in the Collector's Club. Yeah, but you have no reason to be in the Collector's Club. Exactly. I do all my subs through you. <laughs> As does most of Ireland. Yeah, listen. Everyone on this island does all our subs through Enzo. And I can't get $60 of Fanatics Live credit. That is a no. disgrace. Although PSA I don't think Magazine, I've been, you've been enjoying I've been, that. Yeah, I've been having a great time with that. Yeah. I keep them all sealed. It's going to be my retirement someday. Your exclusive perks? Are you enjoying them? I haven't... I haven't I actually know yeah the bulk. That's why I got it. I got oh, it for the That's bulk. why you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I am. I'm yeah, listen, I'm enjoying the benefits that I do have. I might not get this new Fanatic uh, benefit, but it is what it is. You ever take I'm advantage not... of one of the monthly grading specials? I haven't, not yet. Not yeah. I haven't had a chance to. They're they're all very right. specific, modern, postmodern, all this sort of stuff. I don't get to I haven't in fairness, I head is head has been in the sand since we prepped the card show and I'm still in the recovery mode. Uh, that's right. The, show. the weather in Ireland just got better, and I'm I'm coaching my second illness. Um, in like the last two weeks, I recovered oh, yeah. more and then came back. But now I'm tomorrow. I'll be good. I'll be 100 percent number one. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I like that. Uh, I was gonna say as well. I think it could be good to mention that uh, MGC Jason, did you did you have this in? No. MGC Majesty Grading Company, our friends in the UK, came yeah. to the Card Show, supported it, which we appreciate. They have been officially recognized as a professional grading company. What do you mean? That's I listen, that's exactly what I mean. So you want to start doing your research, Jason, because what I What do you mean? That. Who who does that? I part of me thinks it might just be eBay. There's a um, company that grades grading companies. No, not that. I think like it, I think eBay now you can say I think MGC shows up in the I I, I didn't look into it enough. Here we are. Look. <laughs> MGC, yeah, it's eBay. eBay has recognized them as a professional grading company. There you go. Okay, where is that? Where do I see that? I'm on the MGC Instagram page. Right. I can share my screen, maybe. That could be good. When did they announce this? It was a few days ago. It's. I'll tell you. I'll tell you where it is. I'll tell you. I'll give you the um one, two, three, four down, and it's far left. Oh, here we go. Here we go. By the way, just speaking of magazines. If you pick up the latest copy of the MGC magazine, there's a little bit from us there in women's soccer, about women's soccer. There you go. I think I think MGC, I just want to give them their flowers because I do think... Sure. Uh, particularly myself, like I'm very anti-grading company that isn't PSA, uh, SGC, or I suppose CCG or whatever. Uh, I think it's a super difficult space to break into. I think so many plucky startups attempted it during COVID, um, but no one else kind of went about it as I suppose professionally as MGC and mm. apparently as successfully as MGC they've supported like every single UK card show they've supported a lot of European card shows they came to ours uh, got a couple of tables and just went about their business trying to grow their business and I think they've done so in a professional way and I just want to congratulate them for getting that recognition from from eBay yeah um, so, so what this means in, in practice for people who may be wondering is when you're filling out your eBay listing and you uh, click uh, the options for who graded it, MGC is now available to select as an option. You don't have to write that in as a other please specify kind of job. Yeah, which I appreciate. I think it's good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Massive yeah. moves. Massive yeah. moves been made. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Nice, there no, it's go. good because I was going to just say to you that uh, in the comments of the Fanatics Live PSA uh, Collectors Club post, so somebody commented, great news for all collectors. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? What, what do you mean? mean? What do you want? To, they're not going to reach it through your phone and tussle your hair. You know, you don't have it's to. Coming. They're not coming. It's coming. It's our company. It's all right. Yeah, but it's uh, that's um, the kind of oh, that, collation. That's really good. Oh, that's really good. Please don't do that to me. <laughs> oh, God. Come on. Keep have a it. bit of bloody pride. Oh, Great God. news for all collectors. Where's your, where's your, I don't know. You have your Becca hat on, is it? That's not a Becca hat. No, I'm not saying that's a Becca hat. I'm saying you have a Becca hat on. I wish. I w Dr. James Beckett will be turned in his grave. He's not dead, but he'll be turned in his grave if he could see what's become of the industry he loved. I think Beckett uh, made out at a good time. Yeah, no. In hindsight. I'd say he's a happy There's man. probably a time there where he was like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have sold, but then he was like, oh, I really did very well. I've done very well there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank God. Um, there was, uh, Enzo, I don't think you saw this. There was a big article um, in Bloomberg um, how Michael Rubin ended up holding all the cards. Mm, uh, that's a very good headline. 
Yeah, hijacked contracts, scuttled public offerings, stealth acquisitions. The Fanatic CEO, famous for his Hamptons white parties, has become the most feared deal maker of his generation. Um, that's that's a very good write up already. Yeah, it's an extreme. I, by the way, I thought I had to pay for a subscription. You don't need to sign in, create an account. I signed in with Google. Um, but there's a kind of an account of how uh, Michael Rubin built Fanatics Collectibles and why he used one in why he went into this industry in particular. Um, there are some very good anecdotes from it. I let people read it on their own time. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm right, gonna read that. Um, couple of couple of bits I liked about it is they were talking about um a couple of kind of funny bits. Obviously, we all know that he Michael Rubin went behind uh Michael Eisner's back and scuppered scuppered his uh, public offering by getting the MLB. Um, and also. For months, Panini held discussions with Slam Corp and Espos. Panini were also trying to um, go public. Okay. Um, so Panini held discussions with Slam Corp, who were a, uh, a company backed by uh, A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, the baseball legend, uh, on an arrangement that would take the company public at a $3 billion valuation, more than twice that of Topps. Um, but two weeks after MLB's deal with Fanatics blindsided Michael Eisner's company, uh, Salustro, who is the CEO of Panini, Learned that he'd been Ruben too. <laughs> and I just thought that was fantastic. Michael Ruben really did it. Yeah. Um, there's also a great um, piece in the article about uh, Michael Ruben was looking for some other industry to disrupt um, after merchandise and e-commerce and all that stuff, licensing. Um, and apparently he uh, he went and made some investments, made some kind of moves into potentially moving into gaming because obviously madden fifa uh, nba 2k these are massive you know franchises that have been huge money makers for years and years and years and he went in and it says in the article he found that that industry was too competent um, mm. or just didn't it, it couldn't disrupt it it was going too well and uh, so wow. he had to find some sort of industry that was limping around that's such an floor. yeah massive <laughs> They were competent there, so I just went. That's that's one off. Yeah. That's one over Michael Eisner yet again. They were they were too strong. They were too financially sound. They couldn't just be um, slaughtered. You know, slaughtered. Um, so he had to go and find a slightly, you know, it was like weaker he was lamb. like, yeah, weaker lamb, exactly. The limping baby wildebeest that was the hobby in twenty twenty one. Yeah. Um. Yep. Cause that's it. it boomed in COVID and then it kind of busted. Well, it was still booming in 2021, but then it busted and everyone thought, oh no, this is everything gone. And he was like, hold on a minute. Let's tell well, it. The, the interesting thing is that um, it was only the COVID boom that if the COVID boom hadn't happened, Tops would probably still be owned and Panini would still be owned and everything would be the same and they would never have tried to go public because their numbers wouldn't have been juiced up to the level they were. It was only because COVID happened that they kind of stuck their head above the parapet, you know, like a meerkat, and the cheetah oh, saw them. We can cash in. Yeah. We can cash in at a billion dollar valuation based on they our got last years. And then they got slaughtered by Michael Rubin. Yeah. If they had it just said nothing and just, in, you know, said, okay, whatever, we'll just keep going, same old, same old. I would say there was conversations about renewing the MLB license, and they said, ah, let, let the people that buy us deal with that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, let's yeah, not yeah, pay yeah. extra, let's just... IPO now and then, but then Michael Rubin just killed them all. It was crazy. So it's a, it's a crazy. um interesting story, interestingly told, uh, and it's on it's on Bloomberg dot com. Uh, I recommend it to anyone. Um, we rarely get that kind of quality journalism in the hobby, um, but apart from Rich Mueller, apart from Rich Mueller, but he's been doing he's been you know carrying the whole thing on his back for years. And that's changing because there is a new announcement uh, by uh, Darren Rovell, people know, uh, collectibles and sports reporter, um, and a couple of others who have started something called Collect Media, Collect C L L C T. Mm-hmm. Um, Darren Rovell tweeted every week millions of dollars is being spent on collectibles and memorabilia, yet there hasn't been a real media outlet to cover this asset class. What an insult to soccer is it? That ends on April 8th. For collectors, by collectors, invest yourself. In collect media, a new era for the collecting community. Invest yourself. So uh, they're going to be launching in in. A, Wait, in invest April. yourself. Invest yourself. Like engage yourself. Okay. Get ready to to lock into this. Okay. 
um one of the uh, team that's on it, as well as uh, Darren Ravel, is uh, Will Stern. And he kind of explained a little bit about why, uh, what the idea is behind it here. The collectibles industry is worth $500 billion, but it's ruled by creators and influencers firing off tweets on their lunch break, guilty as charged. Time to bring legit journalism to the space. Wow. What an insult again. I'm taking all this personal. Well, you know, I mean, I think, uh, I, I personally think this is great. No, I do think it's great. I'm just being Italian. I'm offended. Mm. Um, it's long overdue. Long overdue. Yeah. But like, Sports Illustrated has a collectible media branch. Yeah. We featured it quite, quite the. Well, I think, quite, that, I, think, I, think you've just, I think you've just answered your own question. Oh, he's seen that and said, "Get, get rid of this." Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, I think you know, Sports Illustrated with collectibles branch, brilliant. Maybe they're going to engage in serious journalism. Oh, they're doing a puff piece of the Dublin Card Show. I think we could. That. Yeah, we can do better than that yeah this is a disgrace Jason. um obviously the one thing is the question that old town cards asked which is a real og how will you focus on staying independent and unbiased i want you to know that i love this in theory but i hope you're not going to be puppeteered as industry mouthpieces just because you're associated with some journalists and pseudo journalists will you tell us where your funding comes from who's pulling the sp- strings and will says This is something we take extremely seriously. We're going to call it like it is. If that costs us partners in the short term, those aren't the people we want to work with. Darren Ravel has been pissing off people for 20 years and he ain't stopping now. Wow. Woof. Darren Ravel, please. Please. Behave. Behave, Darren Ravel. I love it. I love it, Jason. I love it. It's about time someone professionalized this operation. Yeah. Very exciting. There you go. Um, because I thought you know the uh, the Bloomberg article on Michael Rubin and Fanatics Collectibles and all that stuff, that made me like just kind of hap- so happens they all came. This all kind of happened at the same time, but that made me feel like, oh yeah, like it's good to kind of have somebody who's not completely wrapped up in it reporting on it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like uh, sometimes you'll see um, if if like something you know, there could be like a, a referendum or or some sort of political thing going on in Ireland. And then you'll see an article about it in like the New York Times, say, and yeah. you read their analysis of it. And all of a sudden you go, oh, I guess it I guess it would look like that. It does look like that. And you can almost kind of see it more clearly from the outside, as opposed to all of us talking to each other all the time. And we're all completely biased in all different ways. Yeah, no, Jason, here's me thinking not, or not a lot happened in the hobby this week. And yet it's been more people positioning themselves and getting ready for the future, you know, getting ready yeah. for what, what it looks like on the other side. Well, it's also another example of of you know another another group of people looking at our, at the current hobby and saying, "Yeah, this looks like it's gonna keep going." Yeah, it's gonna go somewhere. Let's invest. Essentially, another, but another, vote of money, another vote of confidence for the old industry. Yeah, crazy. So that's it from us. That's it. Congratulations to anyone whose team made it to Euro 2024. Commiserations yes. to our Welsh friends and everyone else that fell at the last hurdle. Mm. Not time today to get into football, but but that's that's what's going to happen. We're probably back next Tuesday. because uh, Yeah, we're traveling. We're traveling. It's Easter. Traveling. Happy Easter to anyone that celebrates it. I hope you get good eggs. I hope yep. you are, you know, get a good feed. I hope you're not idiotically traveling because you forgot it was Easter and mm-hmm. ended up in Birmingham. Yeah, the two of us. If anyone's in Birmingham, that's where we'll be this Easter. So if you want to invite us around for a, you know, like a lamb or something like that, you're more than welcome. Yeah, um, you can say no. All right, that's us. Mm-hmm.